Hello, I'm Dr. Rachel Chacho, and today I'm going to be speaking about advantages of robotic surgery in gynecology. I am local. I graduated from Spanish River High School and went to Florida State University. I did my um, medical school at the University of Miami and then did my training on Long Island at Winthrop University. I'm a fellow of the American College of OBGYN since 2004, and I have a focus in minimally invasive surgery. My practice is Women's Health Partners. It's located in Boca Raton. It's a premier large OBGYN practice with a satellite office in Boynton Beach as well. The program today is going to review benign gynecologic conditions as well as some of their symptoms and treatments. Um, and I'm going to focus on the surgical options and the advantage of robotic surgery in them. So the main conditions that I generally treat are fibroids and pelvic masses, as well as abnormal bleeding, endometriosis, and pelvic pain. This here is a picture of normal anatomy. One of the more common things is uh, fibroid tumors of the uterus. Um, you can see different types of them here. They are benign tumors that vary in size and location, and that alone will actually change how they present to the patient and what they come in for. The vast majority of women will actually experience at least one fibroid, whether they are symptomatic or not, by the time they turn 50 and enter menopause. There are lots of symptoms that go into why patients present to me for fibroids. A lot of times it's heavy bleeding and pain in their lower pelvis, but sometimes it can be urinary symptoms, it can be issues related to constipation, painful intercourse, and occasionally related to infertility as well. This here is a picture of um, several different types of fibroids. You can see this one in the front is gonna put a lot of pressure on the patient's bladder, which is right in front there and was definitely one of the reasons she presented to me. There are lots of um, management options due to how frequently they present to gynecologists for fibroids. A lot of them are conservative and we do try to exhaust those opportunities first. Um, most of them are minimally symptomatic and patients just continue to have the fibroids present with no treatment. There are also several hormonal interventions that we can use that are highly effective in the majority of treatment um, for these conditions. There's the birth control pill, implants, and a hormonal IUD is very effective in most patients. There are some additional treatments that can actually shrink specifically the fibroid um, and may help patients cover the gap until they get to menopause. Um, but ultimately, if the symptoms are significant enough, we do start to talk about surgical options for the patient. Depending on location, we may be able to resect them through um, the vagina into uh, a hysteroscopic approach. Um, we may remove the fibroid itself and potentially consider um, hysterectomy or removal of the uterus depending not only on their symptoms but also their desire for childbearing. Here is um, a picture of a uterus with a fibroid in the posterior aspect in the upper uh, left corner there, and then removal of the fibroid in the picture on the upper right and lower left, and then the repair. And you can see that looks back like, much more like that normal picture that we saw at the beginning of the presentation. Endometriosis is a growth of endometrial tissue that is outside the uterus. It normally, endometrial tissue is within the uterus, that's what creates your menstrual flow, but when it is outside, it can create a lot of symptoms with painful periods, both before and during, um, as well as chronic pelvic pain, again, painful bowel movements, particularly focused around the menstrual cycle pain during and after intercourse, as well as uh, infertility. The, again, the treatment options start out similar to those of the fibroids. We can use some pain medication for those pain symptoms, as well as the medical therapy. There is a newer medication called Oralissa um, that has been successful in some more resistant cases as well. And then we start talking about surgical um, options, including both resection, which is 
highly effective in reducing painful um, syndromes, as well as potentially removal of the uterus and ovaries, depending on the source of pain. Um, there are also some common precancer conditions. This is the reason that you get your pap smears on a regular basis, and that allows us to uh, evaluate for precancerous conditions of the cervix. When they are persistent but not progressive, at times we will discuss more definitive management that does include hysterectomy. Um, and there's also precancerous conditions of the endometrial lining, which may also promote us to discuss um, more definitive surgical management as well. Um, the uh, procedures are, are listed here, but it includes not only re removal of a portion of the cervix, but again, more definitive management with hysterectomy if it's persistent, um, with the cervical dysplasia. And when we talk about endometrial, um, we want to consider removal of the uterus, which is the source of that. Um, ultimately, many um, procedures or excuse me, many conditions will result in the discussion of hysterectomy when patients are ready for um, definitive management. And what I've found is the da Vinci system can really revolutionize the ease of the surgery, not only um, for the patient and hasten their recovery from a relatively significant operative procedure, but also makes it much easier to do a more advanced procedure procedure from the surgical aspect. Hysterectomy is one of the most common female surgeries performed in the United States. It's the definitive management for many um, uterine conditions, and about 600,000 procedures are performed annually, most of them through an open incision. The nice thing about the robot um, and laparoscopic surgery is it does expand our ability to perform these procedures minimally invasive, which is an improved outcome for the patient, which we'll talk about um, upcoming. Um, the robot does allow more um, gynecologists to perform hysterectomy and, again, those more difficult procedures. Myomectomy is removal of just the fibroid. Um, about 40,000 procedures are performed annually, and these are frequently performed through an open incision due to the difficulty of performing it laparoscopically. Um, the robot makes a big um, advantage. It allows us to remove multiple fibroids and to repair that much more easily than traditional laparoscopic uh, surgery and still allows the patient that minimally invasive approach. It's particularly helpful when the patient wants to preserve um, their fertility. So minimally invasive surgery does reduce the patient's blood loss. You get many fewer complications, a much shorter hospital stay, and a, um, a huge advantage in recovery and scarring. When we do conventional laparoscopic surgery, uh, one of the bigger challenges is uh, that it really limits the surgeon's mobility due to the instruments that we have to use in that situation. It's often called straight stick laparoscopy in order to um, kind of uh, give us an idea of the difference between that and the robotic surgery, which does allow more of a wristed movement that reduces fatigue and improves dexterity significantly. So this is a, a picture of the robot. It's state-of-the-art uh, robotic technology that creates a 3D visual image for the surgeon at the console. It allows the surgeon to be in um, complete control and the assistant does have direct access to the patient. So this gives you an idea of those wristed inst uh, uh, movements that are enabled by these small instruments that we use within um, the abdomen during surgery, but it allows for you to operate with much more dexterity and precision, which is a huge advantage, particularly more complicated procedures. This gives you an idea of how small these devices are, um, but they fit through small dime-sized laparoscopic incisions, which are much easier to recover from. Um, so again, the da Vinci surgery um, allows for improved visualization, better instrumentation and control, improved uh, dexterity and faster suturing, which um, results in a quicker procedure and the patient is in and out of the operating room more quickly.
So this um, gives you an idea of the difference in the incisions that we use traditionally on uh, the left. You're going to have that long vertical incision, and then uh, the transverse incision is used in a lot of gynecologic surgery. Um, but the Da Vinci allows us to use three to five small incisions um, in order to access, and the recovery is much quicker as a result of that. Um, so obviously I just spoke about incision size, that definitely is improved, but the pain lasts weeks, or excuse me, lasts days as opposed to weeks with traditional surgery. The vast majority of my patients go home day of surgery. They don't even stay a single night. They are well enough to go home. Um, the recovery is generally approximately one to two weeks, occasionally a little longer um, for more extensive procedures, but it's nothing like that four to six week recovery that we used to have with open surgery. And you return to normal activity within days as opposed to weeks without exercise or um, moving around with comfort. Um, so again, that shorter hospital stay, minimal pain and scarring, and that quicker return to recovery is a big difference for these procedures. The other thing is the um, ability to do more and more myomectomies, again, removal of that fibroid only. Um, through these small incisions is huge. Um, it, we are able to do that much more with the robot surgery as opposed to traditional laparoscopy um, and lets you get back to normal much more quickly. Um, for the surgeon, you have the benefit of less fatigue um, and it allows you to do more complex cases. And I think this is important for patients to understand because if you're able to operate for a longer period of time in your lifetime, you get that expertise as um, people continue to operate in time. This is also a procedure that's much safer for our obese patients and allows us to perform a more complicated surgery on them with small incisions as well. Okay, so just as a summary, the goals of the da Vinci hysterectomy, myomectomy, as well as endometriosis resection is that it allows more gynecologists to perform minimally invasive surgery, as well as advanced operations through these tiny little incisions that allow patients to get back to their normal activities quickly, and allows more advanced cases of fibroid removal or myomectomy to be um, performed in order to maintain fertility or just maintenance of the uterus itself, again, through these tiny incisions. So um, hysterectomy candidates can expect a shorter stay in the hospital, minimal pain and recovery, um, and, excuse me, minimal pain and scarring, and quicker recovery to those normal activities. So I just wanted to review a few frequently asked questions that I get. Um, one of the big ones is when can I return to normal activity? And as long as we're able to maintain those tiny little incisions, usually within one to two weeks, patients are right back to their normal level of activity. Um, sexual relations, that really varies by procedure and needs to be discussed specifically with um, your surgeon. Um, the safety though, I will tell you, the majority of patients have a significant decrease in their risk of surgery with da Vinci surgery surgery, um, and it's significantly less than with open procedure. And if you or somebody you care about has a gynecological condition and would like to discuss it, feel free to contact my office for an evaluation. Thank you.